Hi, everybody. It's Amory from Zebra Pen. How you doing? I just wanted to jump on real quick to say thanks so much for joining us. Shelly um, is really the star of the show, but we are definitely here um, and available to answer any questions about the project or Zebra products in general. Um, but I really just wanted to jump on and say thanks so much for joining us today and enjoy your class. We can pass it over to Shelly. Thanks, Shelly. Yay, thank you so much, Felicia and Anna Marie. Um, hello, everyone. I'm super excited to be here and just to create something really fun this morning. Um, I know if you're not in California, it might be afternoon for you all. So thank you for joining me during your lunch your lunch breaks. Um, but yeah, I'm super excited. So a few things. Again, I'm Shelly. I'm also known as Letters by Shell. So my whole purpose in creating art was to spread or is to spread love and positivity through my artworks. So yeah, if you um, are enjoying the class, we would love to see your final um, artwork pieces as well. If you can tag Zebra Pen USA and also at Letters by Shells and at Michaels, we would love to see everything as well. Um, but yeah, let me know if you all have any questions, feel free to um, ask them in the chat box. I'll have mine available, but let's go ahead and get into it. So I'm going to share my screen so you can see what I'm working on. Okay, so if you have not had the chance to um, print out the handout, feel free to do so. Um, but if not, I'm going to go ahead and give you the breakdown of all the steps as well um, with the lettering portion and also the um, illustrations. So yeah, this is basically what we're going to be creating today, a fall DIY banner that's um, really fun. And I hope you enjoy it as well. <laughs> So before I get into um, the banner portion, I did have also like a banner um, handout. If you did not print that out, you can feel free to do so. Um, but um, you can go ahead and um, just sketch out a banner shape that you'd like to cut out. Um, but while we do that, or if you haven't had a chance to work on that yet, what I'm going to go ahead and do today right now um, is kind of give you the breakdown of the banner template and kind of just explain the illustration and like how I'm going to place everything. So that way you have an idea to get started and then we'll go ahead and do our final piece on um, this banner. Okay, so I think a few people are asking about the handout. Okay, so I think, yeah, we're going to go ahead and share some links available. Um, but yeah, as you're working on that, I'm going to go ahead and just give you like a really rough sketch of what I'm, I'm going to go ahead and do on the banner portion. So when it comes to um, just like any type of artwork that I like to do, I like to have like the focus um, be the lettering portion. So I'll go ahead and usually write out the lettering portion first and then now use that as an idea. Okay, like how can I um, now sketch everything else around the lettering portion? So this is going to be my banner template that I'm going to kind of explain. So just um, do like a rough sketch with me and I'm going to go ahead and write the word grateful right in the middle. Um, you can feel free to take a look at the handout. I'll have it actually next to me so you can see it for reference if you do not have a chance to print that out. Like that. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and start with my uppercase G. And I'm using a pencil to sketch everything out because I also have a hard time centering things. It's so tricky. So at least with pencil, you can all go ahead and get a good idea. Awesome. So that's my grateful and then just adding my flourish right there. So that's kind of um, the idea. You can obviously make it a lot smaller when it comes to the final banner as well. But now that we have the lettering portion kind of around the center point of that banner, now my idea is, okay, like how can I fill around it to make the banner feel more full. So um, using this now as a template as well, kind of just like seeing the placement of everything. So I like to start actually like on the um, kind of like around the bottom, like bottom 
around the left side. So I'm going to go ahead and draw one of the leaf illustrations. Actually, let me go ahead and use this. Um, I'm going to go ahead and use this leaf first. So kind of like placing it around here. I'm going to do it a little bit fast so that way we can go ahead and do the final piece. But basically, after you draw your stem lines like this, the idea is to now draw some like squiggly lines around it to create that really fun leaf shape. And then maybe we can go ahead and draw like a pumpkin right here. And I'll go a little bit, um, I'll do like more of the breakdown when I do the final banner piece, but kind of giving you like an idea of like how to sketch things out. So that's kind of, that's kind of where I'm at right now. Um, I went ahead and, and drew a pumpkin on the right hand side and then I'll go ahead and now work my way up here and maybe I'll draw like a leaf shape right here. So just kind of like sketching everything out, just having fun with it. Okay, so don't spend too much time on this piece because it is just going to be like our sketch um, process. But just kind of wanted to um, take some time to explain this and kind of like um, explain how I do the illustrations. Any questions so far? How are we all feeling with this? Okay. So basically, after I have like a better idea of like drawing all of the bigger illustrations, um, I'll go ahead and now use. Um, I didn't get you actually added to the illustration page, but just kind of giving you like oh an idea. After I draw the bigger illustrations, then I'll go ahead and fill it in with stars and dots and circles just to kind of like help um, make it feel more full. So that that's kind of like in these areas, I'll go ahead and add that star just to kind of give you an idea. Yeah, so just kind of um, wanted to give you that breakdown. I'm just going to fill the rest with a few leaf illustrations. Um, but yeah, let me know if you have any questions. I think that's good. And then probably one more leaf up there. Okay. Awesome. So are y'all ready to do the final portion um, where we're going to go ahead and do it on a bigger scale banner. Any questions with the um, sketch process? Okay, I'll give you a few minutes or like a few seconds <laughs> and then we'll jump right into it. Okay, so this is the banner template that I went ahead and cut out for myself for this example. So if you are um, getting right into it, let's go ahead and, sorry, give me one minute. Okay, let's go ahead and do the lettering portion first. So using this as a reference, if you'd like, or the handout, I'm going to just sketch out grateful. And my goal is to not make it super big just like a good size where it is the focus, but also I have enough space around it. It might take you a few tries because then I'm looking at mine. It's not, I can't, or I didn't center it. So I'm going to erase it and kind of start over again. So feel free to take your time. And I'm sorry, the, the pens are shaking. So now I'm going to actually start maybe about like two inches away from my edge and start there.
All right, that looks much better. Oh yeah, definitely use a ruler as well. If you wanted to kind of like map things out, I probably should have done that. But yeah, definitely feel free to use a ruler. So after you have the lettering portion done, then we can kind of do like the, the fun part and draw like the bigger illustrations around it as well. Um, I'll go ahead and do exactly like what I did on this banners. So that way um, you can kind of like have a reference as well. But if not, if you want to just go ahead and like stick to one illustration, you can definitely do that as well. So going ahead and starting on the bottom, right or like right underneath the R, a bit further down, I'm going to draw my pumpkin squash shape. That. I'm drawing my stem. Okay, and then drawing the lines that kind of outline the shape of the squash. Like that. And then right next to it, I did have my single leaf illustrations. So with that, it's basically just a stem. And then we're going to draw like a teardrop shape. And you can also loop the inside just to make um, or give it a little bit more details. Okay. So now I'm going to work my way on the right side and kind of just like start filling around the lettering portion. And then I'll work my way outside um, all of that. So I'm going to go ahead and start with this next leaf, which is right here. I'm starting with that. And these are just like um, scallop shapes that I outline the, of the inside of the leaf. So um, now the next leaf right here, I you can draw it like this going in the same direction as the other leaves. I went ahead and um, made it go like in an opposite direction just to um, almost imagine if you had like a pile of like or like a handful of leaves and you kind of just like threw it on the ground kind of like how would that placement be they're not always going to be like straight up and that's the reason why I wanted to go ahead and make sure I kind of um add a little bit of a different direction for the leaves here okay and then zoom out now oops okay so now that's kind of what I'm working with and then just like now working my way downwards um actually before I do that let's actually start drawing some illustrations up here so let's go ahead and do this exact same leaf that we did right here but now up the top and going in a different direction like that. And then now we're going to do the teardrop shape leaf again, but now we're going to draw a total of three leaves. So I'm going to actually angle this just to give myself um, some more direction. So I'm going to draw my rounded stem first, and then my teardrop shape leaves. Now turning it around and kind of now figuring out, okay, I do have to draw some illustrations on the left-hand side. So this one's going to be a different leaf shape. Um, it's gonna be like this one that we did um, during our rough draft sketch. But basically with this one, um, I'm gonna have it go in different direction as well. Drawing this stem first. And then now inside of the leaf like that. And now I'm going to draw some like wavy squiggly lines kind of outlining the inside of the leaf as well. Yay. 
Okay. So now kind of figuring out, um, when it came to my example, um, I'm not too sure why I didn't draw some illustrations on like the left and right side. Maybe I felt like I didn't have enough room, but I feel like in this case I do. So I think I can draw like a pumpkin right here on the left side. So I'm gonna go ahead and draw my rounded pumpkin. And then kind of having, adding those lines going outwards like that. Okay. So I'm actually going to also now extend this flourish of this letter G, because I think I can actually extend outwards like that and that still look great. I just kind of want to give myself a little bit more like, um, space it out a little bit more. So now with that, let's go ahead and see. Um, I'm actually going to go ahead and draw my berries actually on the right hand side. So drawing the berries here um, basically is just a stem that has three stems total and we're just drawing circles at the very top. Okay. Awesome. So now that we did some more like illustrations around the lettering portion, this is kind of like um, a chance for you to kind of figure out, is there more illustrations I can add around the lettering? I think I can actually add something here, um, maybe a smaller illustrations. I don't want it to be like too tight and like so close to the next illustration. But I think if I were to take a look at my um, handout, I think I can actually draw this one right here, but that single leaf illustration right around here, but I'll go ahead and make it go like in a different direction um, than this initial one that I drew. So I'm gonna actually make it go maybe like going, having it rounded the opposite way and then drawing my teardrop shape like that. That, that works. <laughs> So now kind of like working my way um, at the top right here, I'm gonna actually draw another set of berries up here. Like that. And then I'll, I'll just like fill this areas with stars and dots. So I'm gonna leave that one alone. Um, but now working my way now like around the illustrations that I initially drew, let's go ahead and draw Maybe another pumpkin up here. So the pumpkin, I'm going to draw like a rounded oval shape and then just another rounded shape going around it like that. Okay, so now drawing my stem and then the fun vines. Actually, let's make it go a different direction. So I went ahead and had this go downwards. Let's go ahead and actually make this one go upwards like that. It's like a very small detail. Okay, so now working my way around it, I'm actually going to go ahead and draw another leaf illustration right here. Maybe we can make it go like off the page. That'd be really fun. So I'm just going to draw the teardrop shape and then just the inside of the leaf, but not the actual stem portion. Okay. So now working my way around it, let's go ahead on the right side, let's draw another single leaf illustration. Drawing a loop on the inside like that. Yeah. And then next to it, I'm going to draw like that heart shaped leaf. So it looks like this. It's like an upside down heart, basically. 
And then now I'm going to use this entire section right here and drawing the bigger leaf illustrations, the one with the scallop edges. Like that. Okay, so now working my way down, um, I think I can actually draw like another heart shaped leaf right here, but kind of having it go off the page a bit. So I'm going to just draw my stem portion and draw the inside. And then now outline it and go back down. Yay. It's filling up the banner so far, so I'm happy with that. Um, I'm trying to see if I can, let me go ahead and actually draw, I'm thinking, I think I'm going to add a, another leaf right here. I think I want to fill a little bit more on this side, so I'm just going to add my other leaf illustration like that. Let's just make it the three leaf illustration. Okay. So now turning my page around, I think that works. Um, okay, now working my way downwards, I'm going to draw another leaf illustration. The one that looks like this, where it's like a squiggly um, outline. So drawing it down here, having it go in that direction downwards drawing the inside of my leaf. And then now drawing my squiggly lines. I was hoping to draw a lot bigger, but it came out a little bit smaller than I hoped. Um, and then working my way on the, I'm gonna now jump to the right side and draw an, another pumpkin, only because the pumpkins are like, they're a little bit bigger. So I kind of want to fill the banner a little bit more. So by using, by drawing the bigger illustrations first, it kind of gives me a good idea what other illustrations I can fill the remaining spaces. Okay, awesome. So that's kind of what I have so far. And now, um, drawing another, scallop shaped leaf like this one, but uh, maybe a little bit less scallops going downwards. That. And then we're gonna go ahead and now draw my three leaf or three leaf, yeah, right here. Maybe kind of having it go in a different direction. And adding the teardrop shapes. Okay. So we're almost done. Um, I'm going to do like a, another heart shaped leaf right here. Drawing my inside of the stem first. And basically, it's like upside down heart. Okay. And I think we can fill the rest. Um, I'm gonna kind of like work my way around. I think I can add some berries. So let me do the berries right here. Okay. And then I'm actually gonna go ahead and draw like another um, scallop leaf on the edge right here. And then working my way a little bit around this. I think I'm going to draw another like, like a half pumpkin on the left side um, on the edge. So that way I can kind of fill more of that negative space. So it's going to look like that. So, so far, this is what we're working with. And 
we're almost done. Kind of just like seeing um, where else I can add some pages. I I want to do like a half squash up here. I just don't know if it will look like it because you won't see the other half. Um, you can try. I don't know if that looks like a squash. <laughs> um, you could also draw like the going the other way where the stem is showing. I think I'm gonna leave that alone. And I think I think we're good. This is kind of what we're working with so far with this like bigger illustrations. And if you did like a very like rough sketch version, don't worry. We're gonna go ahead and outline everything with a um, with the zebra click art pen like right here. So we're gonna use that to outline everything so it'll be more defined and um, outlined. So now this is your time to kind of identify all the little like negative space that you see around it. And we can actually draw like stars around it, stars um, and some dots. So what that's gonna look like for, for me, I'm gonna, I like to just kind of like start on the left-hand side and go downwards and then go back up like this. So I'm actually going to start right here. And the goal is not to draw too many stars, just like enough to fill like the negative space that you see. Um, so I'm kind of just doing it very randomly. Um, if there are areas you're not sure if you want to add a star, um, no worries, you don't have to. We could just add a, um, a dot around it instead. But yeah, I, I really have no like um, technique for this. I just like to visually see everything. And if I feel like there's a bigger negative space, then I'll go ahead and fill it in with star. Okay, working my way downwards now. I think I'm going to Add one right here and that stop. And then now after you do your stars, now I'm gonna go back and add my circles around it as well. And my circles kind of just, um, it's gonna be like the other areas that you see that have negative space. And I think the beauty about adding illustrations at the very end is that you can always go back and add more if you feel like um, after you, color it in, there's still some space that you see. Okay. There's my um, dots and stars. How are you feeling so far? Are you feeling good, good still? Having fun? <laughs> Okay, so now I think um, if you're ready, we can go ahead and pick out our colors and just feel free to like have fun and color everything in. Oh, I love it, you're having fun, so amazing. <laughs> um, so honestly, I'm not gonna um, kind of like tell you which colors you can choose. Feel free to honestly choose like any colors you'd like to fill in everything. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and use, um, so, I mean, I have so many colors to choose from. I'm just, um, yeah, just have fun with it. <laughs> um, let me go ahead and use, I'm going to color my pumpkins in with orange. Um, so I'm using the mild liner pen. You can also use the mild liner brush as well. The brush, it's somewhere here. If you'd like, um, and we'll go ahead and fill everything in. So um, I like to just do like one stroke. I don't want to keep going back and forth and like really coloring it in. It'll just make the ink a little bit darker. Unless you wanna go back and add some like fun texture. So let me go ahead and sh show you what that looks like. So if you colored in the first time, like with one layer and then you go back and add another stroke, it just adds like some fun texture around it. Only if you want to. 
Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and color in the rest of the pumpkins. I'm just gonna use orange for all my pumpkins. And then start um, picking out other colors and stuff for the leaf illustrations. Um, but yeah, if you are heavy handed like me as well, and if your sketches are really um, defined, you can get like, or use your eraser to like, kind of like gently erase everything before you start coloring it in. Um, I, I don't like to do that. I, I'll do it sometimes. Um, I'll usually color everything in and outline everything and then wait for the piece to dry for like, at least like one hour and then I'll go back and erase everything. Um, I like to do that. But yeah, I think also like there's a beauty when it comes to like having the pencil strokes in there. It honestly looks like um, handmade. So I think there's some beauty to that as well. Okay, so now let's go ahead and use, I'm gonna use like this like red orange color um, with my my liner brush and just color in the squash. <laughs> I love to draw drawing was fun can't wait to color now oh thank you I'm so happy that you're all having so much fun it makes me so happy it's like making my whole morning just being here okay so now let's go ahead and yeah and you don't have to like um like color in the in like within your pencil strokes and we're gonna just gonna outline everything too so it's okay if you are not um following your pencil sketches okay so now i'm going to color in my berries i went ahead and colored one leaf in that red orange color And then um, we can always go back if you'd like and color it in again. I'm gonna use now a brown color to color in my leaf right here. That. Yay. And just kind of work my way around it and seeing what other leaf shapes I can color, same color. I used to like alternate after every illustration and I realized how um, I was getting like tired of like picking out like all the colors and everything. So I'll just choose one color and fill in all of the illustrations I want of that color. So that way I don't have to keep switching back and forth. I don't know if you ever did that where you would keep s switching different markers. I don't even know why I was doing that. <laughs> okay, awesome. But yeah, if you have any questions, feel free to um, add them in the chat box. I'd love to read them. So I have three leaf illustrations that I colored brown. I'm gonna now go back and actually um, color in my pumpkin stems with, this, with the same brown. Okay, awesome. So now the fun we're gonna use, um, I'm just gonna use green and color in a few of the leaves. I feel like green's not really very fall, but I was talking about this to someone. Um, since I live in California, I don't really see a lot of fall changes with my leaves. They're still green. I don't know if where you live, 
your leaves have changed colors based on the season. I'm still waiting. <laughs> so that's why I like to use a little bit of green still, since that's what I see out my window. <laughs> So that's what I have so far. So now, um, since I also still want to be like a fall theme color, I'm gonna use fall like colors, but it doesn't necessarily mean you would see it like in that same color for that illustration, but I think it works for this piece. So I'm gonna use like this blue color and then color in a few of my leaf illustrations with the teardrop shape ones. That's what I have so far. And then now working my way, I'm going to actually color in this leaf that same color and then add some more blue on the top right here okay. that's good so far so kind of like looking at this piece and like seeing all the colors is it balanced as well i like to ask myself so i have some red orange going up here some um orange pumpkins all around and then green leaves brown leaves and blue leaves um just like um around the same area that i would see on the bottom and the top so now I'm kind of picking okay like do i stick with the same colors i could do that or i can also um add in a new color. So I used all my colors that I wanted to use, which was um, the blue, green, orange, and the brown and red orange. So now thinking, okay, I can actually throw in another color. Let's do like a purple color. I think that would be really pretty. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead, since I don't have a lot of illustrations left. Okay, so now I'm going to just find other leaves that are not colored in yet. And then I'm going to do this teardrop shape leaf right here. Just outline my leaves first and then I'll color it in. And then I think I'm going to actually color in this leaf as well. Okay. Yay, so I think what I have left is I didn't get to outline the vines of the pumpkin with my green pen. So I'll go ahead and do that and then I'll color in my squash at the very end. Just outlining my vines right now. Okay, I actually have another leaf here. I can actually do it the red orange color. Okay. 
okay and then the squash i don't want to do the squash the red orange i did down here just because there's the leaf that i did squash i can actually i was gonna say green but i already did green let me do it brown have you ever seen a brown squash? I've seen like a light brown one. Hopefully that looks okay. <laughs> awesome. So now kind of seeing um, everything. Um, then we can go ahead and let's color in the dots and the circles around it. So for those, I'd like to use like a brighter color. So I'm gonna use yellow not for all the stars but for a couple of the stars and then um, pick another color and kind of like work my way around it so i want to add some more like brightness to this and that's the reason why i'm going to use yellow for some of the stars so just like um randomly choosing to color in some of the stars and again we're going to outline everything with the um with another marker as well so okay i think i actually well i didn't get to add in any dots with the yellow i'm going to do that too okay i think i have enough yellow that i wanted to add so now i'm going to choose um i can choose like that red orange color that I want um, to just also help balance everything out too. Okay, so randomly choosing which illustrations. Okay, awesome. So now I have, I think I have that. So then the other, I think we'll do like two more colors and then I'm going to move on to all the outlines. So with another color, let's do the blue color that I did. Just kind of help balance everything out. As I'm doing this, I realize I didn't get to um, color in the stem of my squash. So I'm just going to use brown to color that in. Okay. So now let's see. We added the blue, the purple. Actually, I have like another color of purple. It's like, um, I think it's gonna like help balance everything out. So I'm going to add that. Okay, so now I think we're all set. How are we all feeling so far? Feeling good with your pieces? Okay. Okay. Let's see. So now if you're ready, let's go ahead and use the click art pen and we're gonna outline everything. So I'm actually going to do the lettering portion first and then we'll go around it and outline everything. So with the lettering portion, let's add, um, you can just trace it um, with just like one pressure. So it, it can look like a, a monoline type lettering style, or you can also um, make it like calligraphy. So we'll go ahead and add some downstroke in between to make it like faux calligraphy. So I'm gonna go ahead and trace um, my pencil sketch first with just one pressure using the 
click our pen. So now after you trace everything out, we're going to now identify all the downstrokes and the downstrokes we're going to draw like a parallel line next to that. So here's the handout that we did um, or that I provided. Basically, the downstrokes is basically going to be like just every time you see downstroke, we're going to draw a line either on the inner side or the outer side of that in initial line. So I'll walk you through that process. So for this one, I'm going to go ahead and draw my parallel line on the inside. Just like that. Okay. And then now let's do on the outer side for this one. And then just close the top section. Then working my way down, going to now draw a parallel line right there. And then for the A, because I don't have, there's like a lot of space with the R and the A, I'm going to actually draw the parallel line on the outer side. Okay. And now another parallel line on the outer side for the A. Okay, so now this one, drawing it on the outer side of the T. And then the E, drawing it on the inner side. Okay, and then the F, it's still on the inner side as well. And then the U on the inner side, outer side on the other side. And then my L, let's do on the inner side. Yay, so now after you um, have all your parallel lines done for the downstrokes, now we're just going to fill them in with the same pen you're using. And then after you're done coloring it in, take a step back and make sure you drew all the parallel lines for all the downstrokes. There's times where I'll forget <laughs> and I'll, I will like skip one or two letters. So um, if you feel like your downstrokes are not even from one letter to the next, feel free to make them thicker, but don't spend too much time on it. Because then I also know if you spend too much time on it, you'll just keep making it thicker and thicker. And I've done that before, where now I had to make all the downstrokes thicker. And I just, it just kept going. Okay, so I'm, I'm going to stop. So that's kind of um, my sketch process right there with the word grateful. And now for the fun part, just now identifying all of your, um, pencil sketches for the illustrations and just tracing everything with your click art pen. So I'm gonna go ahead and start that process. Just have fun and feel free if you wanna like change the shape of your outlines, this is the time to do so. So I like to do like a thing where I like to have like, my outlines are, are a little bit um, not following my, illustration exactly, but I have some like white space. 
So you'll see that um, it's like a very small detail, but you'll see that um, I'm not following the exact same sketch that I did. And there's some white space. I'll go ahead and exaggerate it right here so you can see it. I just think it's fun. Um, it adds more detail to it. It, it, it's kind of like an offset illustration and I think it looks fun <laughs> like that. So I'm gonna just work my way down and just have fun with this process. And we're almost at the finish line to see your final piece come to life. I think it's always so rewarding to see. But yeah, if you have any questions, feel free yay, to um, type them in the chat box. Let me know what you're doing this weekend. What are your weekend plans? Well, I'm so happy you're all enjoying it and you're liking the final piece. That makes me so happy. So now I'm going to like work my way around here and so I'm doing I'm doing the bigger illustrations first and I'll just outline my stars and dots um at the very end. But if you're already doing that right now, feel free to keep going. I guess for the berries, the stems could have been brown. I forgot to do that. And so I'm just using the outline that I'm doing right now for the stem. This was so fun, great class, very relaxing. Oh, I'm so happy to hear that. I'm excited to do more crafts like this. Awesome, so amazing. And yeah, feel free to, um, if you are doing all your creations, feel free to tag me on Instagram at Letters by Shells. I would love to repost and then I'll tag Michael Stores and Zebra Pen USA as well. Yeah. I think the last class, no one tagged me unless no one um, shared about it. So if you did um, want to share about it, feel free to tag me. I would love to send you a message. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're halfway there. So now I'm just gonna like turn my page around to like help me outline everything. But yeah, it's coming to live. I feel like the details add more dimension to everything and it just makes everything pop oh i'm so happy um i'm so happy you like the click art pens amazing yeah i love using them too i like using them even like taking notes with them So almost there. Okay, so we're almost, I just have to identify all the areas that I didn't do yet. So we're almost there, having fun outlining everything. 
Um, hey, Anne Marie, I have a question for you. Are we still okay on time? We are, yeah. Just whenever you get, um, we have about two minutes to two, but you can keep going and finish up. Okay. I'm almost done with the outline. I just want to show how to add a ribbon to make the banner, and then, and then I'll be all set. I just want to check in just in, just in case. Okay, so I did all the bigger illustrations and now I'm going to go back and um, fill in my stars and everything. Um, the stars, um, let me go ahead and give you an example. I'm gonna outline this star right here. So I'll just go ahead and just make it a little bit longer. And then my circles like this, yeah. So having some of the circles be like a little bit offset, so you, you'll see that you see some negative space around it. But yeah, I'm almost done. After I outline everything, I'm just going to show you how I would tape on the ribbon. You could punch a hole in this banner. I didn't want to do that. <laughs> So I decided I can just tape it on, it's perfect. Okay, taking a step back, seeing what I missed. I actually missed this leaf right here. Okay. I think we're all set. Yay. So this is our banner so far. I think it looks great. So I would give it about like one hour um, or, or two to like before I erase everything. I, I just want to be like extra safe and make sure that I don't smear any of the inks. But yeah, after your banner is all set, I like to just use ribbon. Um, so basically it's going to look like this. Where is the first one? where the ribbon, honestly, all I did was just tape in the back. That was it. <laughs> so if you have some fun ribbon, feel free. Um, just, it depends like how long you wanna do it. You, you can also like trim the excess off. I'll have my ribbon, I'll have them go like in, going in like the, the same direction and just turn my paper or my banner around and just making sure that my um, ribbon is not tangled or anything. And I'll just use tape and just taping the, the edges right here, like that. Um, I think I cut my string a little bit too long, so I'm gonna actually make it around this length. And it doesn't matter how far apart you want the ribbon to be. I like to kind of, um, maybe like make it like one inch off the edges. I'll just cut my excess off. And this is a longer banner, but I think it's super fun. It's like good for any like holiday parties or anything, or just like to decorate your office cubicle. It just adds like a fun twist to it. Oh, oh Barbara, I'm so happy that you enjoyed it and you had so much fun. Have, um, oh, we don't, yeah, I know that we offer monthly monthly classes, but I don't have any classes coming up. No, this was the last one um, that I scheduled with Zebra Pen. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna stop sharing my screen so I can see all of your beautiful faces. And I would love to see your creations. I want to see. Oh, so beautiful, yay. Oh, I love it. Amazing, beautiful work. Oh, so good. Well, I hope you had so much fun as much as I did. Honestly, it was a treat to choose this workshop and I love it all. Oh.
beautiful, Emma. So good. Um, but yeah, feel free to have fun. And honestly, you can um, apply this exact same concept and draw like holiday illustrations as well. Um, but yeah, I hope you're having, I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know if you have any questions. Uh, feel free to send me a message on Instagram. And if, if you want to um, ask me a few questions, feel free to do so. But yeah, I, I would love to see um, all of your wonderful artworks as well but I think that's it I'm so sad I don't want you all to go but um that that's it for me so I hope you have a beautiful rest of your Wednesday and your week and I just hope you have a wonderful weekend thank you everyone for joining thank you bye <laughs>